Good evening, everyone. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest tonight is, he's an actor, accredited stuntman, a knight, and he's into a lot of uh, martial arts. Um, how's it going there, Mr. William Rain? It's going great. Thank you very, very much for having me. Yeah. Um, when I was talking to you online, you had me at Ninja. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. It's a ninja film. What more could you want? Yeah, the film is called uh, Ninja in the Mafia Shadow. Um, mm -hmm. The trailer looked phenomenal. It reminded me of watching the old 80s ninja films. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Michael Dudikoff, American Ninja, a little bit. You know, it's funny you say that, but the uh, the director, uh, James Sheridan, um used American Ninja like we all had to watch it before we started filming the movie because it is it's 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 a hundred percent it's it's I won't say it's not a it's not a parody it's more of like uh an homage to all of those old 80s and 90s ninja movies that like we grew up on back in the day so when he made you watch the first American Ninja did he make you watch all four of them no just the one just the one <laughs> Hey, I was. Just, I just want to make pleasure. sure. I didn't know if you were trying to, you know, kind of get a little ideas from Michael Dudikoff. Come on, a little bit, a little bit, yeah, definitely, definitely inspired by. I would say. Um, so you also yeah. did a lot of um, training in that film too, uh, massive training. And mm -hmm. um, how long have you been in the martial arts? And um, when you were doing some of the stunts, because you're a stunt man too. Um, how much preparation did that take to do like certain fighting, choreograph scenes and stunt work? Well, I have been doing martial arts since I was eight years old. Um, you know, like a lot of kids, I took karate and, and whatnot in high school uh, and junior high. Uh, I found wrestling um, and that was that was a big part of my life for a long time. Um and then later in life, I found armored combat, which we can get into. Okay, you know later. And I've been doing that for almost twenty years now. Um, as far as like for the film specifically, I mean, it's we we shot on the weekends for about I want to say two months, um, and what ended up happening was I I enlisted a friend of mine, Spencer Waddell also an incredible martial artist. And we basically went through the script uh, a few weeks before we were going to start shooting anything. And we pre every one of the fights um, so we could have something to show James and something to show the other actors and stunt guys that were going to be working on the film um, to give them kind of an idea. It's an indie film, so, I mean... In a in a perfect world, you know, if we had Marvel money, my my dream would be to spend you know six months working on everything. But with this, it was more like, okay, guys, and because we're spread out too, it was here's the fights, here's what they look like. This is your part, study it, and then on the day of, we're gonna run through it like as many times as we can before James says, okay, no, we have to shoot, and then we're gonna shoot it. Um, so it was kind of run and gun, but I think, I mean, we had some, we had some really great stunt, stunt guys on the film, uh, right off the top of my head, uh, Daly Siddons and Matt Allen were phenomenal. Matt's, uh, a Taekwondo guy, um, and brought a lot of really, really cool kicks and, uh, uh, he throws, he throws a 540 kick at one point, which is sick. Um, and Daly's a crazy awesome like parkour genius. So we were able to kind of bring all these skills together. And the actors themselves also were really great at, at picking up the fights. So I felt really blessed, honestly. It was an amazing cast and crew to work with. So how'd you um, – I know you're, uh, you know, referencing from uh, 80s ninja movies – um, mm -hmm. how'd you come up with the idea of, you know, uh, you know, like a modern day ninja taking on the mafia? Oh, well, that's a, I mean, James Sheridan, our director is also the guy that wrote it. Um, so he said that, um, 
you know, he was just really inspired by, like I said, American Ninja, Mm -hmm. but also like, uh, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's brilliant. You'll have to get him on the on the podcast to to really pick his brain about where he came up with the idea. But it's such a it's such an eighties idea. I, I love it so much that it's you know, it's it's a it's a guy that works at a pizza place that just happens to be like in trouble with the mob and now he's gotta he's gotta fight the mob to save his, his pizza restaurant. That's interesting. So, um, how much fun did you have when you were wearing that ninja outfit? Oh, you know, I had a lot of fun. We were shooting in like June and July. Um, so I'll tell you, it, look, it was amazing. It was all incredible. I wouldn't trade a minute of it, but wearing that mask and those black pajamas in like 90 degree heat, that was that was a chore sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was crazy. Uh, another uh, guy that's on the film with you too. He's a good friend of ours. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Derek McMahon. Oh, he's a uh, he is uh, just an awesome guy all around. Uh, uh, meeting him on Ninja that was the first time I met him, um, and uh, we kind of hit it off pretty quickly. Actually, um, we keep in touch and. He's out there killing it, absolutely killing it, getting jobs left and right. Um, but yeah, no, he plays one of the he plays one of the mafia goons, and uh, no no spoiler or anything, but I do get to kick him in the chest. So, <laughs> oh, I so can't wait to see that you uh, take it out, Derek. Um, um, another actress you get to work on screen too um, is Holly. Uh, tell me a little bit about Holly. Well, Holly's absolutely brilliant. Um, she plays uh, she plays the uh, the love interest in the ninja film, and uh, yeah, it was it was really really easy to uh, to act with her. She's just she's just a great actress all around. And uh, when you're when you're working opposite somebody like that, it makes it makes your job even easier when you can when you can just bounce off of each other. And uh, yeah, she's been in. She's been in a ton of stuff too, just out there kicking butt and, uh, you know, small world, Midwest filming world. We're on another film now. So, oh, that's pretty good. Again. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm glad, uh, you know, uh, you guys are doing a ninja film. It's about time they bring out more, you know, like ninja films, especially like an indie ninja film. Um, oh, yeah. When you were sharing that trailer everywhere, I watched it at least three times, man. I was just like getting excited. I go, I mean, I'm a strong supporter of indie film, you know, from, you know, Mm -hmm. especially horror, but also drama. And then when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to talk. I got to talk to these guys. You guys are um, pretty clever doing, you know, ninjas uh, taking on mafia men. I mean, I'm sold. Yeah. I want to. I, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe more people aren't doing it. it. Just seems like such a good idea to me. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, I think it's great. Um, you know, it's it's something different. It's fresh. I mean, because there's so many different. Like I said, there's so many different indie films out there. You know, there's a lot of horror indie films, a lot of drama. I mean, there's of mm-hmm. course a lot of action, but you really don't see anything. You know, kind of like original, like ninjas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I imagine it's, it's got a lot to do. I mean, we're, we're all out here trying to, trying to do the best we can with what we've got. Um, and I suppose maybe, I I don't know. Uh, I'm here now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an accredited stunt guy. I've, I've choreographed an entire feature film. Hopefully everybody likes it. You know, who knows? Maybe I can, maybe I can make some more ninja flicks. That'd be pretty good. Um, how long did it take you to uh, get accredited to be a stunt performer in films? So I got the, it's called a, an SPACT accreditation. It's through a group called Combat International. They're the uh, the stunt team that pretty much does all of Ridley Scott's films. So I don't know, did you see Gladiator? Yes, I did. You remember the opening scene? Um 
you know, they're they're fighting that Germanic tribe or whatever. Yeah. And uh, this big scary barbarian guy walks out of the woods. Yeah, I remember that. Throws throws a head at him. That's Charlie. That's the founder of Combat International. So I got to hang out with him for a bit, and that was really really cool. Um, but yeah, it was it was me. Uh, my buddy Spencer Waddell and my other friend Kyle Potts, we all flew to Scotland uh, for about nine days. It was uh, – the guys at Combat International were amazing. They, they uh, crammed in their one, two, three course like session over those nine days so that we could get it all done while we were there. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was uh, six days out of the week, uh, six hours each day. Um, and they specialize in like, uh, medieval combat for film and TV. So there's lots of swords and axes and shields and all that fun stuff. That's pretty good. Speaking of that, since you were kind of playing with that too, you're also a knight. Tell me a little bit about that. (laughs) So, um, I have been training and competing in armored combat, um, for going on nearly 20 years now. Um, there's an organization out there. It's an international, not-for-profit, historical, like, educational society called the SCA. Um, and I, like I said, I've been in martial arts growing up, you know, all my life. Um, it just happened one day that Kyle, my buddy that I mentioned before, and I were at college, and we saw some guys doing a, a demo um, out, uh, out at the Union. And, uh, they were just in full armor helmet, you know, the whole nine yards and just wailing on each other. Um, and, uh, I saw that and, and was instantly, wait a minute, I can do this. I can do seriously. You'll let me do this. And I was, I I was just hooked. Absolutely hooked. Um, I mean, the thing that attracted me the most to it was that it is a competitive sport, um, and I'm kind of a competitive guy. <laughs> so, so, uh, the fact that they, you would like with Habkido, which is a martial art that I've trained a lot. Uh, there's some light sparring involved in practice and, and, uh, and, you know, drills and training, but you never really get an opportunity to fully use those moves in a real combat like situation. Well, the armored combat in the SCA, you actually, you can, you can learn the moves and then you go and use them at full speed and figure out what works and what doesn't. So, um, since you get in this combat fighting, you know, it is a night. So do you put on like the heavy, uh, chain mail as well? You know, and thank you for bringing that up. I wear armor. Armor is awesome. I have a, a knee length chain shirt. Um, I've got my greaves and my creases, my whole kit. Gosh, I could send you a picture after this and and you can see, but I want to take the idea that it's heavy out of circulation because it's not, (laughs) it's armor. If armor was heavy, it wouldn't make any sense. You have to wear this. You have to, I mean, your life depends on it. If it's so heavy that you're going to be slow and cumbersome, well, you're just going to die. So my whole kit, uh, when I'm all suited up, weighs roughly 50 pounds, all told. That's sword, shield, helmet, body armor, arms, legs, the whole nine yards. Um, Roughly 50 pounds, which sounds like maybe a lot, but it's all uh, evenly distributed. Um, So it's not like like I'm carrying a 50-pound backpack. You know, some of the weights on my hips... Some of it's on my shoulders, some of it's on my legs, uh, and I can do cartwheels in my armor. Oh wow! I like to see this. You gotta do a video so I can see this in this heavy armor. I will. I will I'll put my armor on and go out in my apartment complex and uh, confuse people. Sure. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Hey, I mean it. I want. I want to actually see a video of doing that cartwheel, and I bet all the people in your apartment complex will be going. What the oh, heck yeah. is going on there? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. I'll 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 kit up soon and yeah, before it gets too terribly cold. I'll do it. 
So, um, um, the, you know, the ninja and the mafia shadow, um, mm-hmm. are you guys still in production? You guys still filming? Are you guys done? It is in post-production right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, James, uh, our director is also editing and doing all this score and he's, he's a madman, but he is, I mean, you saw the trailer. Yeah. He's, he's, he's good at what he does. Um, so yeah, we're in post-production right now. I actually have a couple of lines at ADR that I have to record after this. I just remembered. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're, uh, I talked with him earlier today because I told him about this 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 interview, and he's saying right now we're looking at hopefully a January release date. Okay. So, fingers crossed. So, um, when he gets a January release date, are you guys going to show it at different festivals, and also you're going to show it at a a theater? I mean, that's the that's the hope. Yeah. Um, James is looking at a bunch of different streaming services for for distribution. Uh, at least that's what he's told me. Uh, and I think we want to try, we really want to try to do a premiere. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I have my way, we'll do at least two (laughs) because we're, we're going to do one hopefully in Indianapolis. And then I'd love to do one here in my hometown in in Bloomington. Um, we've got a really nice theater and, uh, I want all my friends to come see it. I'll definitely see it when it comes to, and you know, that would be great to get it out into the festivals. Cause I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be liking some ninja action. I hope so. I really do. Um, we're, uh, I'm, yeah, I want, I, like every actor, I want to do this more, like definitely want to do this more. So I'm hoping I'm hopeful. I think it's going to be a really, really fun film. Um, and I'm hopeful that it generates some some traction, and maybe we can. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a sequel someday. So the character you portray is a pizza delivery guy. So mm-hmm. uh, is he like? Does he know the martial arts, or does he go and find somebody to you know train him to you know go after the mob? Trying to think about how much I can say without spoiling too it. Yeah, much away. He. Uh, no, I think I think it's all right. He's a uh, so he works at the pizza place, but he is secretly a trained ninja. Okay, or we- a ninja in training, I should say. He's already he's already a ninja. Um, he has a sensei, and he's in training, uh, and he works at the pizza place because being a ninja, you know, it doesn't really pay. <laughs> okay hey that's cool you didn't spoil nothing and now the my the listeners now know kind of got an idea you know who your who your character is in this film mm-hmm. um and then also you're doing another film uh a horror film with uh paul allen called first mm-hmm. harvest um can you tell that's me a little right. bit can you tell me a little bit about first harvest a little bit without spoiling it well i mean paul's got his serial killer and that's what first harvest is is about um my character is not uh, a huge role in that particular film Mm -hmm. um but paul's already told me that he's coming back for the sequel so that's pretty cool um so i'm i've got i've got a character in the film and i'm also doing a lot of the fight choreo for them as well which so what's it like working with uh you know Paul on set? He's a pretty big guy. <laughs> he's a, he is a big guy, and he's also um, a uh, a wrestler. Not, not like not like me back in high school, but like a, a WWE style wrestler. So working with him was great. Um, whereas I come from you know a martial arts and like stunt oriented background here, he I I could still it translated well. For him with with the with the pro wrestling stuff um so i could talk about you know hey i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a bump here and you need to sell it and he knew exactly what that meant so it was we we clicked pretty pretty darn quickly um and we were actually filming uh just this past saturday um we were we were actually filming out at holly's house uh shooting a shooting a pretty big fight scene um so I'd like it was, it that. Good fun. Yeah. I like that mask Paul wears as the, uh, as the killer. It's, it's pretty creepy. Yeah. It 
very much is. And he made that, I think. So. Oh, he made that, really? Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna... pretty sure. Wow, I was going to get rid That comes directly from his, uh, his mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's good. Um, I'm, I've been looking forward to that movie, too. Um, so far, you know, I've seen a lot of great indie films out there, especially horror. Mm-hmm. But the two films you're coming out with, um, I I'm definitely want to see. You have my attention. You know, <laughs> I mean. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, you know, I do reviews and I go to f- uh, film festivals and, you know, I watch film all the time. And I've always mm-hmm. loved supporting people in the independent scene. I mean. You know, they deserve to get their story shared out there, too. I mean, there's a lot of um, great films out there in Hollywood and all that. But, you know, I think Hollywood should go after more of the independent writers and directors and bring some of their films uh, to the main extreme like they did with uh, Terrifier 2. It started off. Mm, Yeah, it started off as like a like a, a indie, you know, regular indie horror and then, you know, it got shown in theaters and it just exploded. Oh, well, like, yeah, that's the dream, man. Just, uh, you know, it's kind of rough out here in, in the Midwest, honestly, um, trying to be an actor. But uh, but I've seen a lot of really positive, a lot of really positive change, um, especially since uh, since COVID. Um, things are starting to happen and I'm I'm pretty hopeful. Yeah, me too. Um, also, you um, did a um, you were in a film with uh, and got to meet Orlando Bloom. What was that like? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a featured background, um, but uh, but yeah, it was it was a film called Red Right Hand. I think it's still in post production, um, but that was down in in Louisville, um, and I got to basically play a uh, a thug a big uh you know a gang member but like a cowboy gang member i had cowboy hat and the whole nine yards that's interesting <laughs> yeah yeah and honestly i didn't i didn't recognize orlando the first time that i saw him we were all the all the background folk were, were chilling by the pool at this kentucky mansion that we were shooting at um and there's a zip line in the backyard okay and we're all just kind of sitting there hanging out and uh i don't know where this guy just goes screaming down the zip line like Woo! <laughs> <laughs> just laughing his butt off and we're like okay that's kind of that's fun that's cool he's walking back and and uh kind of dragging it behind him oi that's a little fun there i was like oh like he looked he looked like a guy that you could just run into in a kentucky gas station like it was nuts the 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 makeup the outfit everything yeah and he was he was he was cool he was a lot of fun to it, it was really cool to meet my first like actually meet a hollywood movie star and turns out he's he's a nice guy that's pretty cool. I would have loved to saw him zip lining from that. That would have been cool. <laughs> it's just like in between takes. It looked like fun, so go for it. So, um, did you try to do the zip line too? I did not. No, uh, I was. <laughs> it was my first big. It was my first big set. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to make sure you know, making movies, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to be sure that I was wherever I needed to be, like Good. the moment that they needed me. Um, so no, I I hung out exactly where they told me to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the other person I got to meet was Andy McDowell, who is just a queen. I and bet, absolute queen. She's she is amazing. Um, I got to sing her happy birthday. Her birthday happened to be one of the days that we were we were shooting. So that was fun. I bet it was, and I bet she probably had that big smile. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a gorgeous smile. She's uh, and getting. I tell you, I was in three or four scenes 
with them. I didn't have any lines or anything. Yeah. I'm just like, like I said, you know, background, but getting to sit in that room uh, with them and watch those two work was incredible. It was, it was an amazing, like learning experience to get to watch two really su- successful actors kind of, you know, do their, their craft right there in front of you. It was, it was awesome. It was a great opportunity. I'll never forget it. That's good. I bet you learned a lot too, didn't you? I did. I really did. That's pretty cool. So, um, where can everybody find you on social media? Um, so they can find you and what you're going to be doing next. Uh, well, the easiest thing I suppose would be my Instagram. It's just at William underscore rain. That's R a Y N E. Um, I do also have a YouTube channel, but it's kind of like all over the place. Uh, if you search William Rain, it, it should be the first thing that pops up. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of like workout videos, and, and uh, I posted some of my fight videos, and I was streaming The Witcher for a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's all over the place, and and lately it's been. Uh, well, the trailers for the movies, and actually, another movie that I was in is is on my channel. I got permission from the director okay. of a movie called Quadrennial, and the whole thing's on there. I'm in it for like, I don't know, five or six minutes, right smack dab in the middle, but still pretty cool. I'll have to definitely check that out. I mean, I'm always it's it's definitely more of the uh, it's like a college romance type film. It is, so is it like a college romance, more like a rom com kind of? Uh, I think less com- less comedy, more just like a a love story. Okay. Um, I play uh, the 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 story is uh, a guy and a girl uh, graduate high school and they make a deal that they're going to break up. Um. But they'll they'll meet up together four years down the road when they've both graduated college. Um, and, and I play the guy that the girl dates during college. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. That's cool. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I know you're pretty busy, um, you know, being an actor and stuntman. I bet you probably have to get some other stuff taken care of because you're a busy guy too, so... <laughs> Yeah, I've got I got lines. I've got an audition uh, coming up that I've got to prepare for. All kinds of stuff, and then also I have a regular job. So, yeah, I I sleep sometimes. Do you? No, no, I don't. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I I slept, but but it's worth it because I love I love every single minute. Every second that I'm on set is just the best, the absolute best. I mean, it's, it's so. Let me give you another example. Okay. Uh, I was in a I was in a pilot. It never went anywhere, but it's fine. I was in a pilot for a Crusader era uh, TV show. Okay. Um, and I was the stunt double for Richard Lionheart. Um, so that was really cool. I, I wish this show got anywhere, but it didn't, doesn't matter. Um, but we were out there shooting in the desert in California for 16 hours a day, sun up to sundown, um, and a little bit past, uh, and we were all pulling, uh, you know, double and and triple duty. I'm, I'm a relatively competent horse rider. Um, so I was like three or four different characters to just switch costumes and throw me on another horse and go. Um, but, uh, and there were some guys with us that were, you know, it's, it's a 16 hour day. It's kind of brutal. And I get that. And they were, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. I loved every minute and would do it again in a, in a heartbeat. That's good. Um, you got a passion that you really enjoy, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to be doing next, and you know, growing within your 
acting career and your stunt work, you know, maybe maybe someday you'll be being a stunt man for uh, Matt Damon. Who knows? Or I could just be Matt Damon, right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> no, you... I want to be. I want to. I want to be. You know, the the next uh, Tom Cruise or or better Keanu Reeves. You know, I want to. Good choice. I, I want to do. I want to. Acting is the dream, but I also want to do all my own stunts. Like. I love fighting. I love acting. Let's 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 do both. <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe that will happen for you. Who knows? Maybe I'll eventually I'll see you on the big screen and I'll be like, you know something? I know that guy. And then people will be looking at me going, no, you don't. <laughs> say, yeah, that's my pal Robin. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did I did a, a podcast interview with him before he you know made it big. Oh, sure you did, Robin. I did. (laughs) Well, I mean, the internet's forever, so you've got proof now. (laughs) Exactly. But like I said, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank you for, for having me.